So this next tutorial has been asked by a few of you already, and I honestly struggled. I struggled so hard trying to get this to work. I struggled so much that I gave up, actually. I did. I gave up on it for a couple of days. Came back to it for about nine hours in one sitting, piecing it together, and I could not figure this thing out. Because as simple as it sounds, the pieces weren't falling into place. So I outsourced. I actually took to the web, finding those who knew more about it than me, and tried to see if there was an answer out there. And there was. It just wasn't written until about three hours before recording this video. So this tutorial is going to show you how to attach nav markers to your AI that disappear once they are eliminated one by one. Let's get into this. Okay, for map setup, all we have to do is have an AI spawner. That's it. You could technically have multiple. Uh, and I'm going to make a video on a certain fix I found for a little uh, problem with the variables. But anyway, that's the topic for another day. Right now, we're just going to use one. And I have already got mine set up. I'm going to have the team set as neutral. Don't got to change that. Just so we can actually kill them and do the damage we need to to show you how it works. Uh, I've just got four units set up. A Grunt Conscript Blue, an Elite Ultra, a Brute Miner, and a Hunter. The rest are empty, but you can put as many as you want in here. You can put all the way up to eight. It will still function just fine. I have it to where I don't trigger them by script because I don't need to, but you can, and that's okay. Uh, the squad label, I have set it to Bravo. And then squad behaviors, I have set to inactive so they don't try to kill me so we can get this uh, example over with. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's all you have to do. That's it. So to start this thing off, we're going to go right into the Holy Trinity, which you sometimes I think I found out that you don't have to use it as long as a death of a AI isn't part of it. But since this one is, we're going to have to use it for now and make sure that's set to Bravo. And I'm going to go ahead and grab our get, set, and declare uh, variables, so uh, squad variables. So I'm going to skip to the end of this to get them out here. There we go. You notice I put get squad variable down there because we'll be using it later, not right now. So I'm going to go ahead and name this Bravo and the scope is local. I've got black boxes again, but don't worry. This is 100% Bravo. It's a glitch that happens all the time in Forge anymore. Uh, most of the time it just requires reset or not resetting your map, but uh, leaving Forge and coming back into your map and it pretty much solves your problem, uh, at least for the time being. But anyway, yeah, so it is Bravo, both the identifiers. Go ahead and change this one too so we don't got to do it later. Scope local. Okay. Make sure to plug this in here. And then plug in squad to value. And this looks about like, you know, the general way we're going to do things. Like, this is just, hey, we've been here before. We're doing this. But it gets different. You'll see why. So we're going to go to AI, or just regular AI, and get AI units from squad. Push the, Put this here. And plug in this to squad here. This is where things get a little different. We're going to go down here to events custom this time, and we're going to create a way to merge two events into one. And that's what this is for. This is essentially declaring, this is like a, like our squad variable here. This is kind of like declaring a variable for an event in a way. It's got an identifier and everything. We're going to name this now. Make it easier that way. The rest of this, you don't got to touch. It's all good. You just plug in the AI units here into the object list. You just want to plug in your object list, which is our AI units to here. Okay. That's all we have to do here. The next event is when they die. So we're gonna go to events AI and go to on AI unit killed. Now we're going to grab a logic compare, compare squads. Plug this in right here. Go ahead and plug your value in to squad B and then squad from this to squad A. It's just gonna check, hey, did this AI belong to this squad? And yeah, it, it did, so that's why we're gonna use a branch and use true on that. True. Plug these two together. And then that is it. What we need to do now is do the same thing we did right here. Go ahead and duplicate that. Make sure the, nav, uh, the identifier is the same and plug that into the F true. And then the object list, we're going to duplicate this as well. It's the same node from the same type of squad. And we're plugging in the object list to that right there. We're going to plug in the AI, the squad right here into the AI units object list right here. The reason we're doing this is because we're combining both of these events right here when they happen into one event. That way we don't have to duplicate the script here and then do it again here because we're going to be doing that. But by using this method, we can combine them into one to reduce having to use 
one, more than one copy of a node. So we're going to go into events custom, oops, and we're going to grab on custom event. This is basically when this thing happens, when one of these things happen that we have set to it. And you're going to want to make sure that identifier matches so that way everything works. And now here's where we start everything. We're going to go down to UI nav markers and grab a nav marker. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Now we're going to grab set marker enabled. And you'll see why we're actually doing this this way. We're going to make sure that's false. We're going to make sure that the nav marker is actually not set when one of these things happen. When they spawn, we're not going to have the nav marker set yet. And when they die, we're going to make sure that the nav marker goes away. But there's a reason why we're doing it like this. Now we're going to get nav marker position or set nav marker position. Go ahead and plug it in here and plug in nav marker. All these nav markers uh, inputs will be using the exact same nav marker right here, which you do want to name this. I've skipped over that, but that's something you do need to name. I'm just going to name it Bravo for the simple fact that, yes, this is Bravo Squad and all AI units will be using this. Um, until the end when I will show you how to get only specific ones to get it. So anyway, the position is set like this so that way it has a place to disappear to whenever it dies. And it will be erased, essentially. So I'm going to set everything to zero here. And we're good. Now we're getting to the in logic. Go to for each object. Go ahead and plug this in here. There we go. So now the objects, we don't have to worry about using this because it's already done for us by using this. So go ahead and plug that into the object list like that. And there you go. You were basically emulating plugging into this one without having to do that from a separate event. Now we're going to grab from our UI nav markers tab again, the very first node, attach nav marker to object. Go ahead and execute that per object. And the current object will be, well, the object. <laughs> The nav marker, again, is the one right here. You're going to use that same nav marker for all of them. <clears throat> the offset is important because the offset is just how far away from the object is this nav marker going to be. Do you want it to be under them for some reason? Then you would have it at the Z set to negative something. Or if you want it above their heads, you would have the Z set to something positive. And you can kind of play around with that, do whatever you want. And it's, it's pretty easy. Just keep in mind your axis is X, Y, and Z. But for me, I'm just going to have it set right on them, right on their origin. And then lastly, we want to make sure that it is enabled after that. Because what it is, it's going to take the, all the nav markers away for, us, for so fast that you can't see it. And then it's going to put them all back. But it's only going to put it on the live ones. It's not going to put it on any dead AI. So th that's the only reason why we're doing it like this. But there you go. That's your script. We did the custom events because it saves us the trouble of having to do this right here twice we only have to do it once because we would have to copy it plug it in here and then have the first one plugged in right here and this set to both of uh, these from these two so that saves us a lot of time and a lot of duplicated nodes that save space so let's go ahead and give it a try before we move on to the next small step because it is a small step they all have nav markers connected to them i killed him and his was gone let's move this grunt let's just kind of push him a little bit Notice it's stuck to him. It's still on him. Yep. Kill him. Gone. Melee him. And it goes along with him wherever he goes. And yes, it will continue to fall off. And if you kill the last one, it will get rid of that one too. So now here we're on the second part. It's a really short one. But what if you only want a specific AI to have it? Or like, yeah, like a specific type. Well, now we're going to go to AI Advanced. And get AI character type place that in right there get AI unit attach that to this one so basically it's going to grab the units from the list which is the Bravo squad and it's going to check their character type and we're going to compare that so we're going to go to logic compare and the second node compare character type go ahead and plug in character type a to this character type we got from our unit and we're going to compare it was it a uh, grunt construct conscript blue and that is the one I'm going to have it set to. So we're going to go to branch and plug that in like this. Execute that branch per object this time. We just add a little middleman here. Added three separate nodes and it changes everything. Make sure they are the same character type. So you only want specifically a grunt conscript blue from the Bravo squad to have this nav marker. Let's go ahead and start it. And there you go. 
None of them have a marker now except for the grunt. And when you pop the grunt, it goes away. Yep. And you can repeat this for each one. So you can just kind of change this to an Elite Ultra, whatever. But I'm not. Because what if you want the grunt to stay having it, but you don't want the brute to have it or the hunter, but you want the elite to have it? Yes, works the exact same way. Just plug in the, the stuff here, but and we're going to add one one more node, and it's going to be a Boolean logic. Because that's how we can, we can combine uh, different logic chains like that. <clears throat> Make sure both of these are set the same way you would connect this one to here. Anything that you would connect there, you're going to connect to this. And we're going to use the or, so that way it's one or the other. And it's going to do it again for the next one, and it will cover them both. So now, when we test it out, now the Elite and the Grunt have it. Pop him, it goes. And pop him, it goes. Last but not least, I'm just going to show you that you can do it for the third type as well. Or that you can go up to all eight different types. You would just need to duplicate that, and then duplicate your Boolean logic. Disconnect the ore here, and connect it to this one. So that way it combines all of them into one and it still gives you the same results, but with your added AI type. Oops. Make sure that you change that to the one it's supposed to be because I left it on Elite Ultra as a Brute Miner. Let's do that again. And there you go. Pop him, get rid of him and get rid of him. There you go. And yeah, you can do it to all, all eight, up to eight different types if you want to. But yeah, there you go. I'm not going to include this in the uh, prefab because it's not really necessary. Um, you can just kind of add that on yourself. It's not hard or anything. And you can just kind of watch this tutorial if you need the help. And you can customize your nav markers for to do whatever you want, say whatever you want, of course, within the limits of the options themselves, teams, position, icon, all that good stuff. But there you go. So it's finally done. I'm so glad this one is out of the way. I was pretty lost at first, but it's knocked out now and it's important because I know this is a key factor for many of your maps out there. So I hope it helped you guys and I'll see you soon with another.